Hallelujah. This morning, the Lord has laid a word on my heart. Hallelujah. When things seem hopeless, what do you do? Hallelujah. God woke me up very early this morning, and as I was praying, he gave me this word. So I haven't got a script, and I'm trusting God to speak through my spirit. Hallelujah. And I just want you to open your Bible to 2 Kings chapter 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Kings chapter 20. Hallelujah. I read from the New Living Translation, 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 onwards. The Bible tells me that about that time Hezekiah came death, um, became deathly ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover, recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, the Bible says he turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Hallelujah. Then he broke down and he wept bitterly. But before Isaiah had left the middle court's yard, this message came to him from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Tell him this is what the Lord, the God of the ancestors, David says, I have heard your prayer and I have seen your tears and I will heal you and three days from now you will get out of bed and you will go to the temple of the Lord and I will add 15 years to your life and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria I will defend the city for my own honor and for the sake of my servant David. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know what you have gone through over the last week. I don't know what has come your way. I don't know what news you have heard. But the Lord says that when hope is all lost, he is there for you. If only you will turn to him. Hallelujah. So we hear in the book of 2 Kings chapter 20, from 1 to about 11, which I've just kind of read, I've read up to about 6. But the Bible says that Hezekiah had the news. Hallelujah. He had news, and the news wasn't good. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the Lord came through Isaiah and said to him, Get your house in order. Hallelujah. And that today, your time is up, and I'm going to take you away. Hallelujah. But Hezekiah realized that he could not just resign to that fate. And he knew that he serves a God who is able to give him another chance. Hallelujah. Do you believe that your God is able to give you another chance? Hallelujah. Yes. That when hope, all hope is lost, when the die is cast, when there is disappointment around you, when the news around you is not good, the Lord is able to step into your situation Amen. and turn it around for your Amen. good. Hallelujah. Amen. So Hezekiah decided that, no, 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 no. I am not going to let that news just leave me at that point. I am not just going to agree to the word that you have come with. Hallelujah. And so he decided to turn his face to the wall. Hallelujah. I don't know what news you heard over the week. I don't know what disappointments have come your way. But this morning I come as a voice of encouragement. That regardless of the trial in your life, regardless of the tears, regardless of the disappointment, regardless of whatever you have heard, if you would turn your head to the wall and cry unto the Lord, the Lord is able to intervene. Hallelujah. The Lord is able to intervene. The NIV version says that. In those days, Hezekiah became ill. Hallelujah. It might not be illness in your situation. Hallelujah. It might not be death in your situation. It might be something to do with your marriage. It might be something to do with your health. It might be something to do with money issues. It might be something to do with children issues. It might be something to do with your job. Hallelujah. Beloved, disappointment can come in different ways. In diverse ways. And the life of a Christian is not supposed to be a smooth journey. Sometimes we feel that once we become a Christian, everything becomes easy flowing. Hallelujah. It's a smooth sailing journey. But it is not. The Bible says that we should remember that whilst we are in the world, there will be afflictions. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells me that. 
that the afflictions of the righteous are many. But what does the Bible say? It says that he delivers him from them all. Hallelujah. If only you would know that you serve a God who is able to deliver you from every affliction, from every disappointment, from every bad news, from every evil news that will come your way, then you will turn unto him and not unto yourself. Hallelujah. You will not find solutions in yourself, but you will find your solution in God. You will go before the Lord and you say, God, I have come to you. I have heard a prophecy from the book and um, the, the, the man of God, but I refuse to take it in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and decree that I will live and I will not die. And I will live to serve your purposes for my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Beloved, do not accept defeat so easily. Hallelujah. Sometimes when things are not working the way you want it, all you need is to go back to your God and face the wall. Hallelujah. Your wall might be your pillow in your bed and you might cry unto your God and you will tell him that God I come to you. This is your word concerning my life. But this is the reality as I stay. And I want to believe you by faith because the Bible tells me that the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody going through a challenge this morning? Is anybody going trials and tribulation? Hezekiah knew the God he said. In chapter 19, he had already gone through a lot of ridicule. He had fought a lot. He had gone before the Lord and he had made his case. Hallelujah. When the king of Assyria had ridiculed the people and had said all sorts of things, he went before the Lord and he said, Lord, I lay the letters before you. This is what the king of Assyria is saying about our case. But Father, you are God and I want you to hear our cry and I want you to deliver us because your name is at stake in this business. Hallelujah. If you serve God faithfully, his name is at stake in your life. Hallelujah. And you will not disgrace himself. Hallelujah. Amen. You are not the first and you wouldn't be the last. And God will not cause his name to be dragged into disrepute because of your situation. Hallelujah. But the, the, the situation we need to do, what we need to do is to have the tenacity and to have the ability and the capacity to say no and to say that God, I know this is what the report says. This is what the medical report says. This is what the financial report says. This is what the health report says. But I choose to believe your word that I am above and not beneath. Hallelujah. So Hezekiah faced the wall and the Bible says that when he faced the wall, what did he say? And he said to the Lord, the Bible says, when he heard this, he turned his face to the wall and the Bible said he prayed. Beloved, God answers prayer. Yeah, yeah. He is a prayer answering God. Hallelujah. Yeah, and he gives yeah. results. Hallelujah. Yeah. So if you come to the point where your back is against the wall, yeah. where there seems to be nowhere to go, just go before your God and cry unto his, his name and call unto him and say, God, I am coming before you. Remember me, O oh Lord, he said. Amen. And he said, how I have been faithful to you and have served you. What is your reference point in that prayer? If you had that bad news, what would you tell the Lord? What would you say is your reference point? Hezekiah knew that he had served God faithfully. And he knew that in chapter 19, God had come in faithfully and had delivered and had killed 185,000 men and aided, hallelujah, when the king of Assyria was ridiculing them, the Lord himself intervened without their hand. And the Lord delivered them and he killed 185,000 soldiers without any instrument, hallelujah. That is the God we serve, hallelujah. If we will trust in him and we will believe in him, that the whatever challenge we go through, whatever situation that will come our way, the Bible tells me in Psalm 55 verse 22, it says that cast your cares before the Lord. Amen. Hezekiah knew that he needed to cast his cares before God. Beloved, if you will be that Christian, who knows how to cast your cares before the Lord? Who knows how to cast your cares before the Lord? Who knows how to cry unto your God, not unto man? Who knows how to be able to, to, to tell your story before God? God will intervene. Hallelujah. Amen. But how sometimes as human beings, we choose to sell our story to other people. We choose to go for solutions in other people, in other places that we think is a place of our solution. But if you believe it is the Lord who satisfies your life and he is the one who is able to restore unto you the yes that the cankerworm, that the caterpillar, or that the locusts have eaten in your life, then you will run to him 
him, hallelujah. And as we run to the Lord, the Lord is a faithful God, hallelujah. So beloved, what is your reference point? What do you do for God that you can go and stand before him and say that, God, look at this and look at that. I have served you faithfully. I have cried on you faithfully. I have done everything you have asked me to do, hallelujah. Begin to hear my cry, hallelujah. And the Bible says that, that those who look unto him, the Bible tells me in Isaiah um, Psalm 34, that those who look unto the Lord, what does the Bible say? It says that their faces are radiant and they are never covered in shame. So beloved, if you will look unto God in the midst of your challenges, if you will look unto God in the midst of the hopeless situation, the Bible assures me, O oh Lord, that your face will be radiant and you will never be covered in shame in the mighty name of Jesus. He says that, David says, I have been young and now I'm old. That he says that I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. You will not beg for bread in the mighty name of Jesus. You will not be disgraced in this land in the mighty name of Jesus. If only you will keep your focus as God. If only you will turn back to him like Hezekiah did. If only you will spread those news on the floor and tell the Lord that this is the testimony ahead of me. But I declare that in your word, your word tells me, O Lord, that this is my life, that you will prosper me in this land. So that is what I believe. And God will change the situation around. Hallelujah. Are you ready to turn onto the Lord this morning? I don't know what you have heard. I don't know what's going on in your life. But God sees every pain you go through. God sees my pain and he sees your pain. He sees your frustration and he sees my frustration. And he says he has come and he's able to help us. Hallelujah. So Hezekiah did not say that yes, you have said it. Let me just go and write my will and decide who is going to inherit my properties. Let me write my will and then put my house in order. Just as the prophet Isaiah said. He stood and he said, no. Father, the things I want to do for you, I haven't finished yet. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't resign to your faith, beloved. No matter how hard it is. Push and pray and work through it. But do it with God, hallelujah. Yes. Do it with God. Don't trust in your instrument. Because if God can kill 185,000 men without anybody's involvement, what else can he not do? There are many battles he fights for us in our dreams and in our sleep, hallelujah. Yes. It is more than enough of a testimony for us. And that alone is a reference point, hallelujah. So that is why when Goliath met when uh, David met Goliath, he said, the Lord who delivered me from the hand of that lion, the Lord who delivered me from the land of, of the hand of the bear, he is able. And who are you? This um, um, circumstance Philistine, hallelujah. There are sometimes that things will rise in your face and will try and father, just destroy the name of the Lord in your life and want to tempt you with his grace. But beloved, God is a faithful God. As far as we serve him, he's a faithful God. Regardless of the pain we go through, he's a faithful God. He's able to do what he says he will do. The Bible says that even when we remain unfaithful, the Bible says he cannot be unfaithful. Because faithful is his name. Hallelujah. He is true to his word. Hallelujah. He is true. The book of Numbers tells me that. That he is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Has he said a thing and would he not do it? And Paul tells us that our lights, our affliction, are temporary. Hallelujah. So, but sometimes it feels, whilst the pain is real and is hot, it feels like it's forever. So sometimes three minutes can feel like three years in your life. Hallelujah. Three minutes can feel like three years in your life. But beloved, if we will go back to God, and if we will cry unto him, and if we will tell him to do what he needs to do in our lives, the Bible says that none of his word will come forth and return unto him void. He says just as the rain touches the earth and makes sure that it fulfills the purpose for which it was brought. He says that whatever he has said concerning your life, Sometimes prophecies might come into our lives and it looks like it's taking forever. I heard some beautiful testimonies in the coffee morning yesterday, even though I wasn't there, hallelujah. 
I had beautiful stories and testimonies of how holding on to faith can make miracles happen. Hallelujah. Amen. And beloved, I want you to know the psalmist says in Psalm 121, he says, I lift up my eyes onto the hills. Where cometh from my help? For some of us, we might not have solicitors. Yes. We might not have any advocates. Yes. But when you go before your knees and you go before the Lord, you tell him that God, you are the one who sits at the right hand of the Father. And you continually intercede on my behalf. You continually intercede on the behalf of my children. You continually intercede on behalf of me, Lord. And for that matter, your word says, because I trust in you, you will not put me to shame. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, tell your neighbor, God will not put you to shame. The situation might look hopeless, but he will not put you to shame. Amen. If only you will look up to God. If you only you will lift up your eyes. If you only have, you look up to him, it might look insurmountable. The mountain might look so big. That's why the psalmist says, when I look up to the hills, where cometh from my help? I am helpless. I cannot do anything. But the Bible says that. He says that. The Lord is my helper. Yes. He is the maker of heaven and earth. Yes. And he is the one who owns the cattle in the thousand, on the thousand hill. Hallelujah. He is able to do all things. Silver and gold belongs to him. Hallelujah. And he will not drag your name to disrepute. Hallelujah. If you will serve him faithfully. So Hezekiah comes to the Lord and he said, remember. Remember my dedication in your house. Remember my service. Remember my offerings. Remember my tithing. Remember all the things I have done. All in the service of the Lord. And begin to deliver me all from this situation. And my, the Bible says that, and the Lord had him. Hallelujah. And what did the Lord do? The Lord added another 15 years onto his age. So, beloved, it comes to prove that the Lord is able to deliver. The Lord is able to restore. The Lord is able to refill our joy. Because he tells me in Joel 2. 25 thereabouts that he says I am able to restore all the years that the locusts and the caterpillar have eaten in your life. All the years that the cankerworm have eaten in your life. So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The crawling locust, the consuming locust, the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The bottom line of today's message is a trust in your God. Amen. It might not be a smooth sailing. Yes, affliction will rise. Many things will happen. But if you will trust in our God, if you will trust in God, Abraham trusted God. And God did what he wanted to do in his life. If we look at the Bible in the book of Genesis 22, the Bible says that God tested Abraham. And he passed that test. And the Bible says that he made him a blessing. And as a result of Abraham's blessing, we are all here. Hallelujah. Amen. When you come to the point where you are stuck in between roads, where there is no road ahead of you, and it is impossible to turn back. That's the difficult thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get to a point and the back is bad. Mm -hmm. And you can't go forward either. God says, I am with you. Amen. He says, I will be with you. Amen. In the fire, I am with you. Amen. He is with you. Amen. He is with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes you might have a choice, so you turn back. But there are times that there are no choice. Hallelujah. And you just have to look up. If you will look up, God will come through for you. Amen. Ezekiel had no choice. Because if the Lord has said it, then it is final. But he challenged it. And he said, God, I haven't finished my mission. I haven't finished. I haven't completed my purpose. So give me another chance. Remember all the things I have done for you. Remember all the things I have done for you. Woe unto you if you have nothing to say, God, remember. Yeah. If you have nothing to say, God, this is what I have done for you. So remember that. If you have to go before the Lord and give him reference point of things that you have done, for that reason, what would you say to your God? This morning I want us to know that in the midst of our desperation, our God is able to deliver. Hallelujah. 
our God is able to deliver. He's able to save. He's able to do all things. When Peter had come to the point where he realized that he had told all night and there was nothing else he could do, Peter was disappointed. Peter felt hopeless. Peter felt like there was nothing else I could do. But he trusted God. And when the Lord asked him to do it again, he said, even though I have told, even though I'm a skilled fisherman, even though I know how to do what you are telling me to do, and I've done it and I've got the evidence to prove that, you know what, there are no fishes in the sea. But because you're telling me to do it, I will do it again. Beloved, are you hearing what the Lord is telling you? The Lord they might be whispering unto you to give it another go. Are you ready to hear what the Lord says? And are you ready to trust him? And are you ready to cast your fears onto him? Are you ready to cast your anxieties onto him? Are you ready to do it afraid? Are you ready to pray and know that God is faithful? The Bible tells me in Jeremiah 33 verse 3, he says, call unto me and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Are you ready to call on God in difficult times? Or you are ready to just talk about it and just have a pity party and just leave it as that. Beloved, that is why in the valley of the dry bones in Ezekiel 37, when Ezekiel saw the dry bones, the Lord commanded him to speak and to prophesy. Sometimes we have to prophesy against the negativity we see. Sometimes we have to speak the word of God against the realities of our lives. And that is what the Lord asked Ezekiel to do. And he says, prophesy, son of man. So sometimes the story might not look good, but you have to prophesy over that situation. And you have to speak life onto the situation. And you have to say, thou sayest the Lord. This is what your word says. That my children, or as for me and my children, we are for signs and wonders. And this is not a sign and a wonder that I am seeing. And Father, I trust you for this child's life. And Father, I trust you for this marriage. And I declare and I decree that it shall not be a disgrace, O Lord. Because your name is at stake here, beloved. That is how we need to do it. Because definitely, you will hit that bumpy road. And Hezekiah decided to face the wall. This morning, what is your challenge? What is your challenge? What are you going through? What is the situation on, on her? It might be your academic life that is a struggle. It might be your job that is struggling. It might be your marriage that is struggling. It might be your finances. Are you ready to turn and face the Lord in that situation? Kindly rise up on your feet. And I want you to have your own time with the Lord. That you will pray. That you will ask the Lord. To touch that gory situation in your life. To touch that horrible situation in your life. The things that are not working right. Begin to touch him and just begin to prophesy. Just as the Bible told Ezekiel to prophesy over the dry bones. Until you begin to see an army. Begin to prophesy over your life. Begin to prophesy over your marriage. Begin to prophesy over your children. Begin to prophesy over your marriages. Begin to prophesy over your finances. Begin to prophesy. Begin to tell the Lord that this is what your word says. But I am seeing different. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, Ezekiel went back and faced the Lord. And the Bible says he prayed. And the Bible says he prayed and he wept. And he wept before the Lord and he reminded the Lord of the things he had done. Beloved, I don't know what you are going through, but I know that God is faithful. He says, that if we cast our cares before him that he is faithful oh lord he is faithful he is faithful the book of first corinthians 10 13 tells me that no temptation has befallen you that is not common to man and the bible says but god is faithful and he says that he will not tempt you beyond your strength that he says that even in the midst of temptation the bible says that the lord is able to provide a way of escape there is a way of escape for you Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to lift yourself. Every difficult situation, every challenge, every roadblock, every wall that you have hit. When your back is against the wall, I don't know what situation is in your life. You don't know what I'm going through myself. But I know that the God of Israel, or the God is that I serve is faithful. The God that we serve is faithful. That we will not give up, O oh Lord. That we will march on. That we will hold forth to your hand. Father, that we will fight on until we
we have seen, O oh Lord, that you have established everything we trust in you, O oh Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as a ministry, we hold on to you, O oh Lord. Father, as a ministry, we hold on to you, O oh Lord. Father, as individuals, we hold on to you, O oh Lord. Father, as mothers, we hold on to you, O oh Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we bring our disappointment unto you. We bring our hopeless situation unto you. We bring it to your feet and we declare, we decree, O oh Lord, that you shall make it a beauty that you will cause it, O oh Lord, to be a testimony, that our test, O oh Lord, shall be a testimony to the glory of your mighty name. Father, we thank you, we thank you, Father. If there is anyone who is struggling with anything in your life this morning, if there is anyone here who has had a bad news, O oh Lord, if there is anyone who has had a bad report this morning, Father, we stand in the gap and we declare that you will turn their situation around, that you will make a way for them where there seem to be no way, that you will turn their situations around for good, that you will cause their faces to be radiant, O oh Lord. That you will cause them never to be covered with shame, O oh Lord. But that we declare that shame shall not be our portion, O oh Lord. That we and our children, we are for signs and wonders. That your glory will be seen in our lives. That your glory will be seen in our children's life. That your glory will be seen in our marriages. That your glory will be seen in our finances. That your glory will be seen in our businesses. That your glory will be seen in this ministry. That your glory will be seen in our children. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, like Hezekiah, we face the wall. Father, like Hezekiah, we go before you. Like Hezekiah, we say, O oh Lord, that we will not take this as an answer. Oh, like Ezekiel, we come before you. And we prophesy over every dry hole in our life. And we declare, and we declare, O oh Lord, that whatever situation has arisen in our life, that seems to be beyond our strength. Father, your word tells me, O oh Lord, that you are not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you should repent. Now, have you said that? And will you not do it? But I will come to you and we say that, Lord, that you will hear our cry this morning. Father, hear our cry this morning. Father, hear our cry this morning. As individuals, as a corporate body, Lord, hear our cries. Father, we pray that you will listen, that you will hear us, that you will do, O oh Lord, what you hear us say. Because your word tells me that you will do the very thing that you hear me say. Father, I am grateful. I pray that every burdened heart will go home knowing that God is with them. Yes. Father, in their nights, where they are on your pillows crying, O oh Lord, minister shalom unto them. Amen. Minister comfort unto them. Amen. Father, give them inner strength to give it a go again. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our strength is in you. Our hope is in you. Our trust is in you. We can do nothing without you, Lord. You are the grace that we have found. And we just want to bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.